Okay, by now you know about the four voting methods of plurality, uh, board account, uh, plurality with elimination, and the fourth one being pairwise comparison. So that begs a question, which is this. You know, is any one of those methods better than the other? Do, you know, is any one of those methods of voting a really good one, is the best one, it's the most fair? Um, and this question has been asked for many, many years. Uh, in fact, there was a uh, there's a very famous, well, maybe not so famous, but certainly a really smart guy, um, mathematician and economist, who was asked this question. His name is Kenneth Arrow. Here's a picture of him right here. Um, and so back in the early 1950s, he answered this question. Now, is there any democratic voting method uh, that is a perfectly fair voting system? And it turns out that the answer is no. There isn't. Um, and he proved it, and part of his proof was, uh, you know, he won the Nobel Prize for this um, and other things in, in economics. But uh, basically he's saying, look, if there's, if there's going to be an election that has more than two candidates in it, then there is no real fair, perfectly fair voting method or system. In fact, all voting methods have flaws in them, and so that's what this short video is all about. I'm just going to introduce the voting method flaws to you, or the criteria rather, and maybe some flaws will show up. Um, and then in some other videos, separate videos, uh, I'll go into deeper depths of how to prove each of these criterions. Okay, so what are the four fairness criteria that we're going to look at? Well, the first one is called the majority criterion, and it states the following. If a candidate receives a majority of first place votes in an election, then that candidate should win the election. Well, that makes sense. In fact, it's very similar, kind of conjures up to, to mind the uh, plurality method. Now, remember, plurality method just says whoever has the most first place votes. So the majority criterion is really whichever candidate receives the majority of first place votes. Remember that majority meaning that um, it's more than half of the total votes. So in this particular case, maybe even the plurality with elimination method comes to mind, except there's no elimination that just happens. It's, hey, does any candidate have the majority, more than half of the first place votes? And if so, then that candidate should be the winner. That's what we mean by the majority criterion. Now, what's interesting, too, about this is that this criterion actually always, um, always satisfies, let's see, three out of the four methods that we know about. The methods that are always satisfied by the majority criterion are the plurality, plurality with elimination, and the pairwise comparison methods. The board account method may or may not be satisfied by this majority criterion. The second fairness criteria is called head-to-head -head criterion. This criteria works like this. If a candidate is favored when compared head-to-head -head with every other candidate, and we mean every other candidate, all right, then that candidate should win the election. Uh, let's see, this criteria kind of conjures up the idea of pairwise comparison, kind of a head-to-head -head combat, so to speak, or a head-to-head -head, uh, comparison. So if this candidate, whoever wins, is, f is favored um, in each head-to-head -head comparison, then that candidate should win the election. That's how head-to-head -head criterion works. This criterion always satisfies the pairwise comparison method, but that's it. That's the only one that it really satisfies. The others may be satisfied or they may not be, a, may not be satisfied, but um, it always satisfies the pairwise comparison because it's similar to it. A head-to-head -head comparison is similar to a pairwise comparison. Our third uh, fairness criteria is called the monotonicity criterion. Not an easy word to say, but this one works like this. If a candidate wins an election and immediately following that election, there's a re-election or soon thereafter, there's a re-election, a second election, if you will. The only changes that are made between the first election and the second changes uh, are changes that favor the winning candidate 
Well, then that candidate should also win the re-election. Well, that makes sense. So if changes are going to be made between two elections, the first one and the second one, but those changes are in favor of the winning candidate, the one who won the first time, well, then that same candidate should win the second time, should win you know, the, the re-election. So that's how uh, the monotonicity criterion works. And now this one always satisfies the plurality, plurality with elimination, and pairwise comparison methods, just like the majority criteria did up at the top. And the last of the four uh, fairness criteria is called the irrelevant criterion. This criterion states that if a candidate wins an election and in a recount, right, so after the election has happened, we decide to recount all the votes. But before, before we recount them, um, th we're going to make some changes. And those changes are that one or more of the losing candidates drops out. You know, for some reason they say, you know what, I forgot I have some other duties, so take my name off the ballot. So some, some of the other candidates, you know, one of them maybe or several of them uh, are removed from the ballot, then that winning candidate should still win the election. That's what we call the irrelevant criterion. So it's irrelevant whether the losing candidates are still there or not. Um, with them gone, the, the, uh, the results shouldn't change. The winning candidate should still win the election. Now what's interesting about this last criterion is that it doesn't satisfy any of the voting methods. It doesn't satisfy plurality or plurality with elimination, board account, pairwise. Uh, you know, some of them may be satisfied, but none of them are always satisfied with this last criteria method. So in a separate video, I'm going to show you, um, you know, how to work through these criterias based off of certain methods and to see whether the method uh, whether the criteria is met by the method or is not. That will be in a separate video.